my honourable brothers and elders, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the tawfiq to yet again see another year, a new coming of a year. Remember this, that Muharram belongs to Allah, and January also belongs to Allah. And December belongs to Allah, Dhul Hijjah also belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Generally amongst, you may see there's a, tre- a trend that happens in the world. When a new year starts, people plan from before they have New Year's resolutions. Have you heard of this, a New Year's resolution? What it basically means is people actually have an intention. Okay, I'm going to do this different for the coming year. I want to improve something. Generally, people make things like, I'm going to give up smoking. I'm going to lose some weight. I'm going to try and do this. It's generally, you know, a lot of people, there's so many different intentions, resolutions people make. In terms of making a resolution, there's nothing wrong with making a New Year's resolution. There's nothing wrong with making an intention to change oneself. However, for a Muslim, if, for example, we intend to change something on the third, on the third, from the 1st of January, this shouldn't be the correct approach. The correct approach should be, if you want to do something, do it there and then. Make intention and do it. Don't wait for this big moment. That what I'll do is, I know I need to change this aspect of my life, but I'll continually do it until the 1st of January, and then inshallah I'll be ready to do it. This, only that behlu is the wrong behlu. Why is it wrong? It's because a Muslim should be such that if he or she knows that they're doing something not right, irrespective of when it's, if it's the 1st of Jan or the 1st of Muharram, they need to change there and then. So, for example, we're going to upload this, right, inshallah. If someone listens to this in January, fine, all and good. If someone listens to this in July, let that be your resolution. If someone listens to it in, Jan, uh, in February, make that your resolution. What am I trying to say? Make your resolution when you intend something good, do it. Don't put it off for this big moment that everything is going to be alright. There's nothing wrong with, like I said, intending things. However, as a Muslim, our biggest intention, our biggest goal, our biggest maqsad and purpose in life should be to please Allah Taala. That's our number one goal. And anything which can take us to that, anything that can take us to Allah, anything that can take us onto this path, for us is best. So, we need to have a muhasaba of our own life. I need to have a muhasaba, a reflection on my life. How far am I away from deen? How close am I to deen? How far am I away from the sunnah? How much do I practice the sunnah? And likewise, these things should be incorporated in the grand scheme of things and in relation to our attention, intentions and our resolutions. That's the difference from a Muslim and a non-Muslim. Because you'll generally hear a lot of people talk about, I'm going to go to the gym, I'm going to give up smoking, I'm going to eat healthy, I'm going to do this. Generally, it's all in relation to this worldly life. Now, there's nothing wrong with that per se. Someone intends this, I want to lose weight. There's nothing wrong with that. In some times, it might be good. For example, if, if my health isn't good and I say I'm going to improve it, that's a good intention to make. However, like I said, the difference between our intentions and perhaps non-Muslims is that we all incorporate this other aspect, which is what? Which is who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yani, our direction, our motive, and our target is Allah wa ta'ala, and we believe that everything else comes secondary. So for a Muslim, how can then one person, if our goal is Allah, how can we put something off until the new year? How can we put something off until the first of Muharram? How can we put something off for this grand date of resolution? Rather, it should be, yeah, one person should think, Yar, I'm not actually close to Allah, so what I need to do, I need to fix up my life. And as soon as you have this intention, this is such a ni'mah from Allah, practice on that intention. In, the terms of, in, the, in, in terms of te- technical terms, these thoughts that come are referred as warid. Warid. Thoughts that come in the heart. You know, sometimes you're sitting and you think, Yar, I should read namaz. Yar, I should read some Quran. You know, I should do this. Alhamdulillah, that's such a ni'mah from Allah. Do that thing immediately. If, it comes, if, if this thought comes in your mind, you should do a certain thing. I should read Quran because generally I don't read Quran. I'm weak. So this thought comes. Yar, parna chahiye. Tu insaan hai, tu musulman hai. Allah gave you so much. You should read the kalam of Allah. Even if you picked up the Quran and read for one minute, Alhamdulillah, it's better now more than you did yesterday. What Shaitan will make you think is unless there's this big grand scheme of changing things, then it's pointless. And I've heard this so many times, and you may have heard this, right? I, one brother, he said to me, the reason why I don't grow a beard is because I tell a lie sometimes. What logic is that? But I, I, you know, in some way he said, I don't keep it because then it's, you know, it's, it's, it's of the beard. 
I mean, your mashallah, your, your jazbah is good, but it's got no space in the deen. Because Allah didn't ask for perfection. Okay, perfect yourself, only then can you make amal on deen. Jasabiho, however you are, Allah will accept you. So you haven't got to worry about what you look like on the outside. Or This is all to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That we're not negating the outside, we'll be apna hissa hai. That's what is important. But this thinking, we hear this in our muhawara. I've heard people say it, and they said it to me, dadi rakki ye karte. As if to say, okay, now you've got a bit, it's like some antidote against everything, all shar and evil. Alhamdulillah, it can prevent you from doing certain things because, and sometimes it's wrong. Like some people think, if I have a bid, and then I won't go into a cinema, because people will say, oh, astaghfirullah, molvi sab, molvi sab. So some people don't keep it because then no one will determine differentiate between me and someone else. I'm just giving an example, jo market mein chal rahi hai then what happens is, is that if, for example, someone will think, I can't go into a place of vice, I can't go into a place of shar, I can't, do, I can't be seen walking on the street with a girl, for example. A person would think twice because they're thinking, Yar, I'm supposed to be Islamic, I'm supposed to be dini. So it can and help someone stop. But I said, this jazba is only right to a certain extent. Because let me ask you like this, when you're doing something wrong, what should be the thing to stop you from doing that wrong? People or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allah wa ta'ala. The thing, the maqsad is wrong. Okay, I'm not doing guna. Because, oh, log kya aksan yaar. Oh, log kya. Oh, kya log kya bolenge. Oh, wait, chodo logon ko. Think what Allah's gonna say. That's, that's the first thing. So I said, this is a wrong motive to have. Okay, log kya bolenge. Oh, wait, what does Allah think? Do that first. Think about and worry about that first. So I said, anyway, I mean, there's a number of things. Let me just come back for a second. Implementing deen, practicing deen, bringing things into our life is a good thing and we should not delay. So someone to make this resolution, inshallah, New Year's, I'm going to get on the gym, I'm going to lose weight, I'm going to... all in good. But as a Muslim, we need to incorporate additional things. I need to improve my life, I need to bring my life more onto the deen, more on the sunnah, more on this, I need to control my anger, more... all of these things. But like I said, because for us, deen is the most important thing. Everything else is secondary, deen is primary. And then I said that sometimes... You know, Allah forbid, but the misconception is, is that, well, our intentions are based around certain practices because we're worried about what people think, not what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes. So anyway, keeping this in mind, we're moving on inshallah to a second part, which I want to focus on is this, is that how can we practically do this? And what things can we practically do? What I encourage all brothers to do is analyze our life in relation to halal and haram, the do's and the don'ts. If somebody does a lot of good deeds, but also does a lot of bad deeds... He is not as good as that person who does very less good deeds, but doesn't do very many sins as well. So somebody does lots of good, but lots of guna. And then someone does little good, but he doesn't do much guna either. He still will sin because he's human. Every one of the sons of Adam is khatta. Everyone, Rasulullah mentioned, everyone is sinful. Everyone will sin. But from amongst the sinners, the best sinners are the ones who make tawbah to Allah. So it's not a case that you won't sin, my brother. It's a case of when and it happens. It will happen. It does happen. And we're human. And you shouldn't judge people. Okay, oh, he's gunegar. Who's not gunegar? Who's not sinful? We're all sinful, subhanAllah. That's why I have no hak to judge another person. Because it's possible I judge somebody else. Allah forgives that individual, but then He doesn't forgive me. How dare you look down upon such an individual? And this is the thing. You should worry. We should worry more about ourselves. So we should analyze our lives and think to ourselves: when, from the time I wake up to the time I go sleep, look at the bad things we do that are bad in terms of deen. For example, I sometimes can get a bit angry. It's a human emotion. It can happen, but I need to work on that. The first thing is to accept it. Okay, yes, I do. Okay, I admit it. Okay, I've, I realize there's a problem here. Okay, inshallah, I'm going to work for the better. I've got a problem that when I walk in the street, I look up. I'm not saying me. I'm giving an example. I'm talking generally here. Yeah? When I give molvi, but a fruity molvi. Obey me. I'm giving an example. That's why I said, I. I'm putting myself in your shoes. To address it like this. Allah save us from sins and we should never disclose our sins. That's why I'm saying this. But I'm saying, for example, someone has an issue of bad nazari. When they walk in the streets, they're looking at women all the time, they're looking at na mahram. But you get a lot of people. Like for example, someone comes, you're dealing with them, Baqadr is rude, there's no shahwad, you're looking at the face, that's okay. But one thing knows is you're actually looking, and then looking again, then a third time, and then fantasizing, then thinking, but this is wrong. Like, what would be the kisi ki beti hai na? 
Why are you looking at someone's daughter in that way? Would you want someone to look at your daughter that way? Well, I don't think so. Then why are you looking at next man's daughter? Islam teaches us to put ourselves in the shoes of others. Similarly as well, someone's got an issue. For example, now they use their ears in the wrong way. How? They listen to ghibat. When people are talking, they let it and they say, ha, 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 but yeah, that's true. Or they, I don't do ghibat. I don't do ghibat. Nay, 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 but you are also adding masala onto the, to the curry, right? You are also adding fuel to the fire. Like some people are talking and you, you're a person interviewing, aha, oh, eh, oh, banda. He's exactly like that. Well, I say, yeah, he's, Bhaijan, you're a Muslim. Whenever you hear people talking even about a non Muslim, you shouldn't even be involved. But does everyone understand this? Ghibat bohot buri guna. Buri or bara bhi hai. May Allah Ta'ala forgive us. So, nay, ghibat guna hoti hai ya hota hai? Chalo, I'll do leave this afterwards, inshallah. <laughs> anyway, like I said, so we need to go through our lives and think, I do this guna, this guna, this guna, this guna, and then try to work towards diminishing it. You're not going to be able to eradicate it overnight. Some people can, mashallah, all in good. But if you can't, just understand, if you have it written down or thing, you've acknowledged it. And then you can work on these things, slowly, slowly. And in addition to that, is building up some of the good things which we do. So for example, in terms of the Quran, the Kitab of Allah, I barely touch the word of Allah. Okay, my brother, let's start with just one minute. Not one page, not one juz, because it's possible. Brother might take 20 minutes reading one juz, it might take me an hour. So if I say a juz, for someone else it might take two hours, for someone it might take even more. So what I said was, speci- speci- uh, specify a time, okay, I'll give one minute. Shaitan will make you think, one minute is nothing, it's pointless. Don't la- leave the shwaswas of shaitan, start with one minute, time yourself 60 seconds. Read 60 seconds, khalas, put your bookmark there, leave it. You do this one week, two weeks, three weeks, automatically your ghara going to kick in and say, hold on man, do two minutes yaar. Do two minutes and you're going to push yourself Two will turn into five, then ten And it will get to a time where you incorporate it as part of your general daily practice Allah give us all tawfiq inshallah So like I said, similes with our salah Some people are very lax in relation to our prayers If that is the case, and we've acknowledged that, that I'm weak in regards to my prayers Okay, well why don't we just start with the fard prayers I acknowledge sunnah is good, nawafil and all these mu'akkadah, and all these are very important in our deen, because Aap sallallahu did it, and for me that's enough. Even the fact that he did something as habit, I want to do it, just because he did it. That's, my, that's, that's what is the taqaza of a Muslim. But however, when it comes to salah, if I'm, there's two scenarios, either you pray for fard of dhuhr, or you just don't pray at all. Is that individual, which one is the better of the two? The one that says, I'm going to only pray if I'm going to pray sunnah and nawafil, witr and all kind of things. Or that person that says, I acknowledge it's good, but I don't have the time, I'll just pray four fadas. Which one is better of the two? You guys know the answer yourself. You this is a no-brainer. Similarly as well, we do exactly the same thing when it comes to that. Same way, guys, when it comes to charity. Many of us, alhamdulillah, we have businesses or shops or we have sufficient earnings. It's good to have a jar at home and waktan for waktan give charity in that particular jar. Sadaqa box or a zakat box or something of the like. The reason why that is because sometimes shaitan can come and when you think that my zakat per year is 100 pounds, 200 pounds, how am I going to pay that money? Okay, pay a fiver a week. You're not going to notice a fiver going. Or when, for example, I go to my local thing and buy, uh, buy something, then put the change in a particular box. These are just ways I'm giving, I'm just, no, deen, is, deen is practical. Deen is what? Practical. So Morbi Sahib is giving practical examples. But deen is practical. So we bring practical ways into our life. So I said, get a jar. I did it, alhamdulillah. We did it at home as well. A personal thing. That whenever, for example, now we wanted to, someone wanted to give us some sadaqah, just put a pound in there, two pounds in there. Before you know it, six months, you open it. And alhamdulillah, And I'll share this with you. Not, not to brag. Allah knows in my heart why I'm saying this. We had a jar. And it was a dedicated sadaqah jar. And obviously sometimes musibah will come, someone's ill, put a fiber, put this sadaqah, this money, this money. What happened was, alhamdulillah, this money built up so much, Allah ka shukur, then we took it out and it was quite a substantial amount. So I phoned up Ummah Welfare Trust and they said to me, we're running a project in Bangladesh, we're going to give you a like, hand pump, you know, water. And I was like, how much, did it co- how much will it cost for a hand pump? They said, this much. And I was like, subhanAllah, that's exactly the money I've got. So what I did was, I, did it, I put that money in their thing, and then they, it was really happy for me, they sent back a, like a picture. They took a snapshot, de- you know, donated by, and I gave it in my, my son's name, Yasin al Baf, and family make dua. And I was really happy to see that, Ki, alhamdulillah, until that water comes out, every qatra, I'm going to get reward, my wife's going to get reward, my children are going to get reward. 
Where did it start from? A little jar for 99p from the shop. And over a six month, eight month period, we're just putting a pound or two time to time. And before we know it, mashallah. But you don't understand where I'm coming from. Because if I just suddenly pull out 20 quid, 100 quid, you won't forget that. But a pound here and there, you don't, you don't miss it. With the intention of sadaqah and zakat, and mashallah, it goes a long, long way. So like I said, it's about analyzing our life, pointing out the bad, diminishing it, removing it, de decreasing it, and looking at the good and trying to increase. That's basically it. In addition to that, we have productivity. In addition to that, you have losing weight, going to the gym, giving up smoking, improving one's health, doing better at business. But all of these are worldly intentions. There's nothing wrong with that. We encourage, we advise, we want, we promote. But deen is about There's balance between the two. Did you ever hear me say, by close your business, four months jamaat, leave everything for the sake of Allah? Did you ever? No. Deen is practical, that's why. Do that, do your business. Do that, also work around the job. Do that, also do other things. But Deen is about creating a balance. So this is why I said, may Allah give us that balance, inshallah, and inspire us and give us the ability to practice and make amal. Like I said, alhamdulillah, there's nothing wrong with intending something for the new year. But let our resolutions be something which is in relation to the Deen of Allah. May Allah give us tawfiq, inshallah.